We'll talk about asymmetric bets today. Next in our little queue, Myth of Failure series. Go back to the start. Don't cheat if you haven't if you haven't caught this all the way through. But yeah, we've been building a lot. We've been building on a lot. And the concept of an asymmetric bet is that something that is you know has asymm oh, so it sounds so technical, but asymmetric downside to upside, which sounds like a lot of garbage. A lottery ticket is a huge asymmetric bet. All right, for a lot of people, they're like, oh yeah, well, I don't know how much a ticket costs. I've never done it. I don't know if you have, but it's it's nowhere near the amount you could win. Uh, it's nowhere near the millions or billions or whatever it is that you stand to gain. So a lot of people think, ah, oh, a bit of fun. I don't know how much, 10 bucks, 20 bucks, less, more, whatever it is. So like, what you stand to lose is 20. What you stand to gain is a million. So that's what we would call a huge asymmetric bet. And um, Sort of. Yeah, just, just just a bit. Yeah, just a bit, mate. And so it's very like a very big concept in investing, right? Because often where you're going to get the biggest financial returns, you know, I'll, as usual, encourage people to think much bigger picture than just financial returns. <laughs> Shock horror. Just practical, tangible example. Disclaimer. 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 Is often will often be on things that are riskier. Agreed. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So you know. You know, Warren Buffett will say, you know, S&P 500 is a good investment. Those sort of things where you might earn like a steady like 2% a year or 5% a year or even like an S&P, I think average is like 10% a year sometimes. You know, like that, that compounds over time. There's nothing wrong with that because it's, it's very low risk. It's very, uh, when they say low risk, low risk that you'll lose your money. Sure. Right. But something like a startup, like investing in a new tech startup or something like that is seen as very risky because it's like it's so unclear whether that will work out as a, to be a viable business and you will so if i put a hundred grand into some like new startup right and like you just don't know what will happen anything you know covid might happen <laughs> you know what I mean? like there might might be good operators in the business for anything could happen right and so but it's really why would you do it then why would you do it if you could lose a hundred thousand dollars well you might make millions off that a hundred thousand dollars right you know like if you think about what facebook or apple would have been worth there's a story about a guy who steve jobs wanted him to be a business partner at apple and i think he sold out like in the 70s or whatever <laughs> and if he kept that like a hundred grand or whatever it was it would have been worth like 50 billion or something by 2011 if i only have 100 in the bank 120 in the bank and i put a hundred on a you know some startup all right, that's probably, you know, unless this is like to save the world, this startup, like it's probably not a good, not a great idea. But if someone who's a, a millionaire, hundred grand, probably not that, you know, a multi-millionaire, probably hundred grand might not be that much for what you stand to gain. So this is like the basic, basic example of an asymmetric bet. And I'm not going to go further into that because the point of this is not investing in startups, just like a initial example. Now, we talked about anti-fragility. We talked about, we've talked about fixed source growth mindset. We've talked psychology. We've talked a bit of philosophy around this stuff around failure. Why would the concept of these asymmetric bets be in your perspective and in your experience important? What's the importance of it? What's the relevance of it? Like, so what? Mm. Asymmetric downside to upside. So what? Who cares? I would say a lot of the asymmetric bets that I've made, I've considered as risky before actually thinking through it, if that makes sense. Yep. So use starting the podcast as an example. Yeah. You think okay. there's some form okay, of- Okay, a good one. You think there's some form of risk or downside, but the downside is mostly emotionally based. Okay. Yep. Like fear of looking a certain way, all those yep. sorts of things. Yep. So, a lot of a lot of the time your mind can contextualize asymmetry in the wrong way yeah that is a really good point so why doesn't everyone do this stuff? the mind in its regular everyday form is very bad at assessing asymmetries mm. very very bad the classic example we'll go through this yeah classic example is asking someone out or something like that yeah on paper yeah there's no risk at all yeah there's a you know someone will say no right yeah, but yeah. emotionally yeah you stand doesn't feel that this way. weight of yeah. rejection 
Yeah, yeah. Emotionally, the downside is perceived to be huge. Yeah. So you get why a lot of our human nature is actually wired against asymmetric bets. Yep. Most forms of asymmetric bets. And it almost makes it look the opposite. It makes it look like the gain is not that valuable and, and the potential loss is huge. Mm. Why do you think that is? Keep us safe. It's an attempt to keep you safe. It yep. goes back to Astro. Yeah. We're, we're that's why we're much more sensitive to, to avoiding pain than we are to seeking pleasure usually. Almost like a nine to one relation. It's almost like the same unit of pain, if it was pleasure, might be like have 10% of the strength. Mm. The same unit as a pain, you know, it would be like 90% strength. It's like, it, it's way more, way, way more. So this is like often the, the challenges we face, right? And so why, why I find this is important is that people look at a lot of the things they're doing as false dichotomies, right? So people will look at, when I say false dichotomy, things that are not like I have to do it this way or that way, A or B. And often you don't really need to be deciding between A and B. And any, anything you try, podcasting is a really good example. You don't know in the first instance if things will work out, right? Actually, I'll go back to the startup example. The way, you know, a lot of like investors and VCs and stuff like that work is they don't necessarily have this magic formula for finding the next big startup. Mm. What they do know is that on average, if they bet on like 20, they only really need one to work. And then the rest of them are kind of like, the losses on the rest of them are kind of wiped off the balance sheet. Right? 100 grand times 20, you know, but then if one of them wins and it makes millions and tens of millions or whatever for them, it completely wipes out those small losses. Mm. Well, the problem is when you're thinking too linear, and you're, you're plotting, you're, you're wanting to see this incremental progress that the brain gets addicted to. It's so hard to accept that and, and have a long view. But the thing is, and I probably for this episode, if I remember, I'll probably bring up a visual because it's the best way. But picture like a, a, and if you're watching on YouTube or something, picture like a line like that. That's how a lot of people want their lives to go. Just continually up and to the right. Mm. Okay. But the reality, if you can picture it, is like picture like a wave. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And that's much closer to like the reality of life in many respects across nature, right? There's seasonal, right? There's, there's sunny days and then there's rainy days, right? But also your mood tends to like be wave-like, right? It's not like just steady and up to the right, like increasing happiness into the future. We want our income to go that way. We want all that. But the nature of an asymmetric bet is you have dip, 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 but you just need one shot to go well yeah so if someone wants to be an entrepreneur right and they try one business and the business fails right? it doesn't uh, doesn't become financially viable and sustain everyone you know this is the this is the kind of like the perseverance tale that it might not work out but the more you try the more likely something will work the more shots you take mm. so that's that's one thing Right? So picture, and probably the better example I use is like books and myself, right? So I, you know, do the first book, 18 and lost. To me, that was like a degree. That was like one thing, wanting to engage people, wanting to do different sort of, get people to think differently about education and just do it, not create courses, but like actually do something and learn that way. But also it's like, I want to learn more about how making a book works. I have the drive for writing. I'd written one book, but I'd parked it. So like, I want to learn how it works. So I, I actually reduced the barrier to entry for myself by doing it as a group thing. Hmm. Right? Because like, I was just doing it with other people. Yeah. It took, takes a lot of the pressure off yourself. It's like doing the podcast with someone else. If you're nervous, it will be way less scary than doing it on your own if you're scared about doing a podcast. And so that learned so much from that, right? Now, if I carry that into the next book I do, then I'm taking the learnings from the previous attempt and I'm applying it to the next one. And it's not that you just learn. There is some level of implicit learning always in the things you do. But if you continue to, if I continue to keep doing book and I can, and I manage to continue learning, then that's like continually firing. They're not, they're kind of not like isolated attempts to me. You're building. 
Mm. You're still building on because I'm learning with each one. I've, you know, I think I remember, I remember like one author, Walter Isaacson, like his later biographies of Da Vinci and uh, Einstein, I thought like were way better than the one he did on jobs. He was clearly like getting better as a writer as he went on. Yeah. Well, I feel like that's the anti-fragile nature of it. That's yeah. the thing. If you have the graph, cause I'm, yeah. Yeah. it's like all these little boop, 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 little yeah. steps that you yeah. don't see. And then it's the, yes. It's the it's a lot of invisible progress. The non-linear aspect, like we've talked about in the past, is just yep. you don't know when it's going to happen. Exactly. And there's very small little downsides. Yeah. And then big upsides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like something like a book, like there's maybe there's like paying an editor and stuff. There's a bit of financial outlay involved, mm. not much, right? But then the the potential upside of like you know a great book. And, and I, it's way more than financial. It's just the easiest way to talk about it. Is like you know. J.K. Rowling only needs one Harry Potter book to fly. Yeah. You know, Taleb only needs one great book. Seth Godin, 20 best-selling books, right? But he only really needs one to break through. And But so much more than that, like, you can think about it in many ways, like asymmetric bets around helping people. Yeah. You can think about the same concept in terms of helping people. Like, that was a, that was a failed attempt to say something true maybe i wrote something then later i thought shit that's actually i completely reframed that the wrong way mm. right uh, but if you're continually learning while you're doing that you you use that information to help you fire a better shot next time you know to, to adjust the target to whatever you care about so the nature of this is that it's this reality that it's not just also you can just blindly take bets like you can just randomly pick sh stocks for example and then you know eventually something might make a bit of money if you're completely blind you're probably still going to like lose money on the whole <laughs> yeah you do that right yep. as a good example but if you invest in something then learn all right why didn't that stock work you know for example if you have that learning attitude and you build on it that's like you're starting to control the odds in your favor. Mm. And we'll talk in the next episode, the next episode, I think, about the U curve of certainty. But like, really, we'll get into why it's the longer term your view in your view is and perspective, the more the more likelihood you can actually like you've got not enough more time for this asymmetric bets way to yep. pay off. And I say this because if it's people understand it, it's very powerful in contrast to, you know, trying to take the, the, the escalator, you know, like the flat or the travelator or whatever it's called and like just flat and consistent. Now, this is where, this is what I think is the real revelation, right? So, cause what, what I think it's important is that people can unlock whatever they really want to do. Real creative things are quite nonlinear, right? The, the, you know, Russell Brunson and his podcasting, right? He, he had, he, he had a friend tell him, you know, your first 40 or something episodes weren't that good, but your 49th was somewhere around the forties. You just like, you, you developed your craft a bit mm. and you learned how to like do it better. Yeah. And from there, like it just changed. It was a, a way better. So even a podcast is like a, can be a huge asset for your life beyond way beyond financial right it brings in so many things it can bring in connections it can bring in friendships contacts who can be useful for your career contacts who align with something you really care about your own just developing all these transferable skills like you know, your, your listening ability your speaking ability your confidence your confidence to reach out to new people it can help you so you got all this stuff but the the development of your podcast can be quite a non-linear thing it's not necessarily like just creeping up views every week all right disclaimer is no one needs to do and persist with anything for the sake of it i think that you also the asymmetric bets also applies to you, you like you do something maybe you do writing or you do sales and you switch to something else but you tend to take the lessons with you mm, you do you know? like you, you don't need no one needs to get attached to anything just because of no i just got to persevere so that it just works out eventually like if, if something's not serving you it's not serving you but I think creative things tend to, and high reward things tend to have asymmetric, like, you know, a journey, right? A, a nonlinear journey. That's the problem. The challenge is how do we negotiate that when we want to have stability and, and security? Like we always have that natural pull, no matter who you are. Um, 
but like you know elon musk i don't think really enjoys having like you know the payroll running like not being able to afford payroll next week right <laughs> it's not desirable it's just like, but on the other hand you have where these rewards are and so people can get stuck you know try, trying to do these things both now i just come back to if you picture like mvl you go back to like mvl right so minimum viable lifestyle like what's what's the what's the least my life can be you don't need to be impoverished but you can kind of take away all the stress by just sorting out your MVL by the simplest means necessary. So for example, Albert Einstein worked as a patent clerk while he was developing his theories until his theories like became his career. Phil Knight was working as an accountant for like four years while he was building Apple on the side. Because mm -hmm. People, there's a runway, there's a way of doing it via runway, which is like, I'm going to give podcasting or writing or this business like two years to like work and then I'll see. And that's fine. But there's a, there's a middle road, which is one I'm much more like disposed to, which is if you have some way of affording your MVL, all right? So for example, you do the cheaps and you help with this, mm -hmm. be a full-time job. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And beauty about the full-time job is it's pretty kind of, stable job as far as we can tell yeah <laughs> and so long as you are doing that you have no problems continuing really with the podcast because no? you're not relying on it for income or anything like that and there's not really even as far as i've talked to you and dom there's, there's no clear necessity to be working full time you guys no. seem pretty happy and you you know you're good people and all that you haven't lost your soul because you work for companies and stuff like that you survived you survived it depends work. which it depends which company you end up working for but it, it does <laughs> so it's, it's not just mvl at any cost no right it's it's still a lifestyle but it's, it takes the sorry to interrupt it no, takes it, it takes a lot of the weight off the creative thing that you're doing yes and a lot of the push yeah and i'm sure you've experienced this hugely Taleb um, talks about it yeah, he does. Taleb yeah. talks about philosophers used to have a, and writers used to have a, a, a trade so that it didn't put pressure on their writing. Cause yeah. If you're like a journalist and you get judged by how many views or something, then you've got to, you're compromising writing for outcomes. It's actually worse it. than not writing. Yeah. <laughs> to me. Well, I, I mean, if you, okay, picture you've yeah. got to write. Yeah. you got to, and it has to earn an income, mm. which means someone's got to buy it. Yeah which means you have to tailor it towards something yeah. in the short term yeah. to get a sale from that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're not going to write the yeah. the thing you want to write. Yeah, exactly. Whereas when you have MVL just sorted by the simplest means necessary, and what it really means is like just getting rid of your ego and your, your glory. God, it's a bit. Diff bit difficult. No, 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 I'm not chucking that out. Um, no. But really, really that's what, but also not, it doesn't mean just being a doormat and just taking just whatever, whatever. comes along. Yep. But something you're content with, something that serves you, doesn't take energy away from you. Yeah. Well, you're not going to, like, for example, if we're doing something that makes us miserable yeah. for, for, for 40 if hours. If your job works you like 70 hours a week, yeah. it's probably like, no, that's not tenable. Or if, you, if you're not enjoying it to some degree during a, even yeah. a smaller work, yeah. working time frame, you're going to be, you won't have the energy. But there's this seven out of 10 kind of yeah. sweet spot, really. Like you don't really want to be six ideally like your whole life doesn't want to be six if your whole life is seven and works kind of like six ish but your life is seven up to you you know what like people can just go figure out what they're happy with but this is the thing if you can sort out mvl simple like if i was trying to freelance write while i write books it's a nightmare because i have to continually source work mm. you know what I mean? it's not consistent stable i have to like put energy into the maintenance of that that's very it saps creativity and energy Whereas if I, you know, if I have a, just a, say I had a job, right? Like you like a proper job or like what happens with, <laughs> I love the proper job, yeah, proper <laughs> job. Or I have like my setup I have now at the real estate, yeah. which is like, it's not, I'm not, I don't, not like out there trying to get everyone's, every single person's business in real estate right now. Yeah. It's simplified. I've settled for the minimum viable version of it to, in truth. That then frees up the energy. If I'm trying to like develop the real estate whilst developing the, the writing, you, you, you kind of lose your, you kind of like just end up at existential, existential flu pretty quick. Yeah. But I can allow that. See, it's, it's all about people put timelines on things, right? People are like, I'll only do this if it works within two years. 
Mm. Right? Like I'll only podcast if it gets a following within like a year or two. And and the thing is, one, you can just record like 10 episodes because you're just curious and trying it. You don't have to like... What's the commitment? Why? You don't Why? have to become Tim Ferriss, right? No. And secondly, if you're going to make a bigger commitment, I think it's ideal not to get caught in this middle zone of something that has to work in two years. Like ideally, if it's possible, I'd, I'd find something that is like audience or none. Whereas like I would do this if it took five years. Hmm. I would do this if I had five years to live and, uh, and I'd want to do it for that five years anyway. And I'd be happy with it in its simplest form. But of course, if it brings more of good things, I don't need to put a ceiling on this. So, so this podcast, right? I've had to le- relearn that this is great if I just talk to Luke and it's great if a couple of people listen, tight knit community around it. But you know, if, if it brings value to lots and lots and lots of people, I don't need to avoid that. No. You know, I don't need to set a ceiling. But it's funny how, because of ego, we so often have something creative. Often people are like, if you're not like the Change extreme the of it, has you Change failed. I only want, like, it's like being an actor. I remember this as an actor. Like, if I'm not like a celebrated actor and director in my 20s, is it even worth it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I have to be Academy Award or Grammy winning. I mean, you laugh, or, but it's, or there's no point. It's you like laugh, but that's the where the brain goes. I haven't goes. made it. It's where the brain goes because yeah. there's so much vanity in those things. Yep. As well as like, yep. As well as like, it's an enjoyable thing. And Dave Chappelle said to his dad, he's like, oh, but what if you don't make it in comedy? He goes, well, it depends what we mean by making it. Hmm. You know, it's like if I earn a teacher's salary equivalent, but do it doing comedy instead of being a teacher. For me, that would be better because I'd prefer to do comedy. Yeah. <laughs> How simple is no, that? No, too simple. Go back. Don't, I not, don't like this successful. simplicity, Joe. No, that's not success. I think of this in, in the running sense. Sorry, I know you yeah. just had a thought and you're about no. to... Um, you're about to. Yeah, so for example, the tendency when you start is to set the goal and be like, I want to run... I need to run this time, mm. you know, by a certain... In, yeah. in a year, I should have a fitness level yeah. that equates to yeah. this. And then you realize that running is not a linear... Yeah. First of all, the way your body changes... Yeah. Is not linear. Yeah. There is asymmetry in that as yeah, well. Yeah. But also, it, it takes you away from the running. It's like, yeah. that that applies to anything, really. Yeah. I don't know if that tied into the point. It but beautifully <laughs> ties in because of how I'm talking about the... Because sim- I don't really... I think most things we think about in terms of the capitalism glories of investing and companies and all that, personally, for me at this point, much more trouble than they're worth mm. getting very into those games for their own sake yeah i think the real beautiful applicable examples of these are in our actual lives these much more humble often understated things and what i think like you know just the best examples i think are the the lives you or i are living trying to live well right now mm. not not which not trying to live well like get to 30 and then uh then we'll have this stuff set up then we'll be happy yeah. we, you and i are trying to live in the moment what live is well now Live fully now. Live fully now. Live fully now. Sorry. Shut it out. Oh, it did the red thing anyway. Shout, shout from the rooftops. Whilst enabling a, f- a future of whatever other upside. The asymmetry is if you enjoy things, if you if you would do things even if they failed, again, the inverted commas. Quote, unquote. Quote, unquote, right? If you would do things, Seth Godin has this question, right? What would you do even if you knew it would fail, whatever the F-bomb that means, what would you do anyway? Right? And so, yeah, I would do podcasting for two years if I had 15 listeners. Right? But I wouldn't do it full time and nothing else because I'd be, I wouldn't have MVL. MVL is like <laughs> viable, but lifestyle, lifestyle. Mm. Right? See, Dom and I, we go back and forth. Yeah. Being like, if we did have an MVL via podcasting, would we still, like, we don't even know if we would leave our jobs. Exactly. We're just like... That's the healthiest place to be. That's the sort of job people should have. And it's not like it's sunshine and rain, but it's like we kind of like doing... What would we... I told you this yesterday though. Like, is it like I'm writing mainly like almost just shy of full time right now, right? Yeah. And even then, it's like I'm doing a book with someone who's great to work with, 
but also feel like, oh God, I can't like let so-and-so down. I need to like do this in a timely fashion. And, uh, and like, it's, it's a challenge because it's not purely just from me. I'm working with someone and it was originally ghost. So it's still like, it's not every day is just sunshine and rainbows that I'm writing every day. Yeah. And I have MVL. It's, it's so, so what's the point of, you know, glamorizing this stuff? That's what I mean. It's the glamour of, oh, but then I could do it full time. You know? That's what I, that's yeah. where, that's where I go back and forth and yeah. I have a conversation with you saying, all yeah. right, Joe, I'm, I'm fed up with this job. Like yeah. when you f- flip into that mode, cause it's yeah. too much on, yeah. but and then you're like, you automatically assume that if you just had this, all this time and oh, yeah. that you would be, Worst. Yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. If you're doing podcasting full time, yeah. then you get into the passion mindset and you're yeah. like, but it's not, it's not the case. my passion. Yeah. <laughs> Because, but you're lacking something yeah. Yeah. at that moment. Yeah. But the, the point of the asymmetric bets point is almost to <laughs> True. understand it. That's the way it kind of works. Yeah. And then you should never think about it again. <laughs> <laughs> no. You should understand that that's the way it works. So you don't put these barriers up unnecessarily between doing something, not doing something. Because we come back to like, a, we did an episode ages ago, Taleb inspired on optionality. If I'm doing other work, right, that is, is my bread bread and butter income. and I But I can do stuff on the side that is playing the asymmetric bet game. Writing is an example. Podcasting is an example. Side businesses are an example. I wouldn't do them because there's a financial upside to them alone because that would be too limiting. But if they happen to have that, you can do like simple like non-stressful have a have a job hopefully for a good company or some sort of other good side thing you do that's that's definitely like viable you know it's not like the perfect job in the world and you can be kind of set your lifestyle is kind of set in an age you know we have the, the capitalist system we have the consumerism all right we have all this so it is expensive there is a cost associated with living this is the reality the risk is you know getting caught up in that because the complexity of it, the complexity of organizing life, and therefore actually missing out. It's actually so hard to avoid. I'm not, com- I, I will always, I'm sure you and I will continually wave in and out of that inner peace. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Right? We it's, call it- it's super challenging. Maybe that we, we talked yesterday, that's probably not even the goal, is to avoid any extent, existential no, it's flu. it's a signal. That's probably like, this is your next challenge. Mm. Right, but to transcend that always and find the peace and joy mm. after, and there is that center. There is that center. Yeah, and so that's where I think this is valuable. That that's the reality. So the pressure, not putting the pressure on. I need to do this, and it needs to work, and then I'll be happy. That's the point. Do you know what I mean, yeah. that's to me the point of understanding this. With asymmetry, the one thing I have is the one thought I have is we love tangibility so much we love tangibility that's the problem because you 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 can you can think about how things are asymmetrical like the podcast and you're like yep. i don't know when the payoff's going to be yeah and i shouldn't be focusing on the payoff but your yep. mind always goes there yeah so that the problem is if you hitch to that it doesn't work mm. that's why i think the actual solution is you need to enjoy it now yes you need to enjoy the process this is just a dynamic that's a reality a convenient reality around you doing what you love so you can just trust the process eventually when you come to that place of loving yourself enough to give yourself permission to do what you actually love yeah the point or uh, other point is that you know this saint huberman said i pointed out with you was that there's some tasks that just really a dopamine kind of task linear tasks yeah really trigger a lot of dopamine reward pathways in the brain like math equations organizing your day well, everyone knows that feeling of ticking off a to-do item and it's like heroin. And then, and then it's <laughs> and like... there's an untick box that was non-essential, like take out the trash and you just think, I'll do it tomorrow. It nags your brain that that yeah. wasn't ticked. But there's no correlation between is that important. Exactly. So what that <laughs> is, is your brain, your brain's linear types of thinking tasks yep. being triggered. Whereas the non-linear is often, and often there's different times of day when the non, like ser- I think it's serotonin and stuff with the neurochemicals are more towards the end the of the day. Yeah. yeah, often towards the end of the day. I, I feel like they got a bit. I feel like he oversimplified. I feel like they're also there in the morning because you get they a lot of flow in the morning. In the morning, I feel like there is a that's there is like the, the deep work start is the yeah. morning. So that's that's when you get very non-linear. 
you kind of surrender. You're not thinking too hard. He explained that a lot of authors often they would love a bit of, Joe Rogan loves a bit of weed, I think, when he writes, or a bit of alcohol. Just takes a little bit of the edge off because it's not the thinking brain that does your best work. Mm. It's the feeling that then gets to influence the thinking. Yeah. And there'll be a bit of noise on the podcast now because yeah. this wild hopefully rain it that cuts, came in. Hopefully it cuts it out. That's but right. Not. People will understand. We don't control the weather. But that is, that's the real value of this stuff. So if you're sitting, if you're like sitting there deciding, I'm going to do this next because it has our asymmetric bets, what you end up doing is it's the wrong application, I think, because you, you start to live too much in the head about it. You're like, when's it going to pay off? And then what you're doing is you're anxiously waiting for the payoff which actually removes your patience. What it actually is, the, the real way to play the asymmetric bets, I think, is to surrender and be comfortable that that's the reality. And you can have a bit of faith. Because if you've got your MVL, and ideally I think most people tend to benefit from a creative outlet. I think that's the real call to action for people. To find like the kind of creative outlet. It can, it can become career relevant or it might not be. It can be what helps you learn and become a very full individual. You know, the writing and podcasting are just these default things, but for some people it's music or, or it is through some sort of business can be a creative outlet, but is the, these things plug you into the real universe because often work conventional workplaces and stuff that might be hard. That can be, there's a lot of, often a lot of pressure. There's a, yeah, we, I, we understand there's just these systems in place that, you know, there's, there's these desires and you've got complex complex cocktail of human psychology and different people's ambitions and stuff lump and needs and it pressures is. are all lumped in there in this one unit that tries to function together it's, so it's very interesting you're very exposed your, your risk of existential flu is like a, very high very high these things give you something else so you're diversifying your life a bit and they are i think they're much better at connecting you with reality that's yeah. that's the case the beauty of them is that there will be this asymmetry, this beautiful asymmetry in there. So I think, I don't know if that we condensed that. I think I, that's pretty much what I think is, was really worth saying about this is that it's a very, it's secure. You're kind of cheating. You know what I mean? It's, you get the security and stability, but instead of this attachment to like the, the highest possible income at all costs, which you wouldn't even enjoy anyway, because what you do is you'd spend it all anyway, really. It's like, if you're not in a good place internally, you compensate for that void with whatever you're given to indulge. Right? It's like the young sporting star. So you kind of gamify the security and stability, so you're not in pressure, but you also get all this, all this beautiful stuff that comes with this. If I was having a, a bad week or something, we did a podcast thing together like right now, Beyond whoever listens to it, this is also like this plugs us back into the universe, mm. right? So that in itself is worth is worth doing. But there's this huge upside of it could potentially whatever I could I could we could both make a career just off my podcast mm. in some sense. Yeah, it's not even your one in theory. It's kind of it's possible, right? Better write up a contract, and it could and it could help your it could help your podcast and vice yeah. versa. Yeah, right. Like oh yeah. 10% of the viewers like running and then it's like natural progression to go to Luke's running. And so even this is a, another, a, another asymmetric bet because you don't have to put much in. Do you know what I mean? Luke doesn't have to edit the episodes. He doesn't have to, uh, you know, like you just, you just kind of show up, help, help set up. We'll use your place for the moment. And you don't have to put that much in. You're working a full-time job. You have your own podcast. You run, you have other friends and stuff. You, so you got this lifestyle with all like a couple of different asymmetric bits in there. Mm. So just the, the potential future upside and, and even financial, but beyond is like, is, is all really in there for like, and you figured out for now how to, how to kind of do it sustainably. And you probably waver at some point and all that. And I think I like to think I'm much of the same at the moment. So it's in between this, like, I'm just going to just take life lying down and just take the best paying job I can. There's the other spec end of the spectrum, which is I'm going to hunt, hunt, hunt for glory and I'm going to hustle and I'm going to be either the startup king or the content king or the Hollywood actor or whatever. There's that like at all costs success. And then there's this middle line we're speaking about. Mm. This is what I think I, we feel like is a very easy place to be. And that's the, that's the, yeah. That's the and the more you are, 
the more I feel like I'm somewhat in the center, the more peace. Or, oh, it's the place of but, peace. And, and you do, you wane from either side sometimes. There's a diagram I have, you, I think you've seen it, but it's like, it's like a wide, it's hard to explain with words, but it's like a, a picture an arrow. And then it's almost like that, the, the needle on a line, a polygraph or whatever, which is going whoosh, 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 violently scribbling. It's like you start off deviating massively when mm. you don't understand much. But then your deviations get smaller and smaller. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get you just you keep going over the the line, but your you, your your deviations from it tend to get less and less. And mm. At times, that's kind of how a self a self awareness journey feels long term. It's funny is that yeah. sort of dichotomy is in a lot of places. You think of left and right political dich- dichotomy as well. Oh well, the world is it's polarity like, is one of the laws like, of the world. Yeah, you know, so anyway, that's, that's why it pops separate. up everywhere. Very yeah, we can go on a full, yeah, I full think, gurn on that. Yeah, let's not. Luke's brains are just lying all over the I table. Think, I think we'd lose a bit of respect. <laughs> <laughs> Minus respect points. Oh, so. we're, not, we're not here for respect. Though. That's it. Is your computer all right? Yeah, it's all good. It's just yeah. thinking. Uh, look, it's just contemplating the episode. And yeah. it's like, what do I think about that? Am I, am I happy being a computer forever? Or do I want to yeah. spread my wings? I wonder where my next pay rise is tired of going. recording. Yeah. That's all they want me to do is and just I record. Just, I have something to say. Hmm. Anyway, we'll, we'll pass that bridge when it comes. So tomorrow, the next episode, I don't know when I'll air it, but at the U-curve of certainty, which will all be about the longer term investment. You can have more certainty, the longer term or the shorter term you think, but in the middle is where it gets gray. I hope we do it justice. That's, that'll be the next one. That'll be good. I don't know what that's about. So Cheers, we'll see. There we go.